All right, today's video is about rust prevention. And here is an item that was brought to my attention by a subscriber of the channel, Ted DeGaro. Uh, he shot, shot me an email probably a couple months ago saying, hey, Tom, I do a lot of the same things you do. I collect tools. Uh, I buy a lot of old tools. I work with tools. And I found this product over the years to be really uh, just he's had a lot of success with it in mainly around the rust prevention. Uh, so I said, oh, thanks for the info. I'll, you know, I'll look into it and I'm going to pick up a can. And he said, just shoot me your address. I'll mail you one so you could try it out. And I thought that was so nice. So thank you uh, so much, Ted, for that. And while I was waiting for it to arrive, I started doing some homework on my own. I went on Amazon, gets really high reviews. Um, apparently, they also make a gun oil that is that got discontinued. Uh, that people just loved, but they're also using this for firearms uh, as well. And it, you know, it's not cheap. I think it's about 14 bucks a can, so definitely a little bit more expensive than WD-40. And it's, but it does a lot more than WD-40. I think we've all used WD-40 for everything under the sun, right? Whether it was a penetrant, whether it was for um, a lubricant. Uh, we used it when drilling, you know, used it for just about everything. Uh, but it, it has its limitations. You know, you got to be careful with WD-40 if you're using it as a lubricant for sure. It will seize up um, in time. But hey, the WD-40 is, you know, great. And I love using it as a rust preventive. I use it a lot for cleaning up rusty tools. This here um, is really good though for all three. And that's what makes it so great. I found this video online where they're advertising it. I think it was on YouTube. Yeah, it is YouTube. And it basically shows it and as a lubricant, as you know, using it as a penetrant, as well as using it for um, just rust prevention. Finally, I told Ted, hey, Ted, you know, if you don't mind, send me some pictures. You know, let's see. I, I want to, you know, I'd love to include those in the video uh, I make with this. And so here's what it looks like. Now, a lot of these pictures are tools that Ted has had for a long period of time. And I had asked him for those so you could see how well it holds up in time. Take a look at these. They're just looking like brand new. And they are a lot of years, probably 15 years or more, he said he's been using this product. And as you can see there, drill bits, this is like the perfect item for drill bits. This is the perfect item for these punches that you see here. You know, those hardened steel items that rust up easy with all that carbon in them. That's what it's great for. And here's just um, some stuff that Ted's collected. And when he gets a tote full, he donates them. And the fact that he does that tells you what type of guy Ted is. How cool is that? So I've had it for a month now or so, and I've used it. Uh, for all the applications that I mentioned. But the big one that I'm going to be using it for going forward and where I really feel like it is a, a differentiator is in the rust prevention category. And I think about, you know, Western Forge. I think about my SK. And they just, you know, they got a lot of carbon in them. They're, they're you know, they rust up easy. Um, you know, over the years, I've had so many of the Western Forge tools and you know they go um they they get that patina on them and as you can see here here's a pair I've had for 20 plus years and for me to get the patina off I had to take off all of the craftsman logos and everything that was etched in it and I don't want that to happen to my new SK tools and sometimes they even come you know or you know this is relatively new and it's already you can see you know, they're going to look like those old Western Forge ones uh, if I don't treat them with something. And some of these, like, I, you know, are near and dear to my heart. These are relatively new, and these specialty pliers are not cheap. Even on sale, I, you know, these things are going for 70 bucks uh, or so. And, um, you know, you can see that that, that steel's going to rust over, and you'll get the patina on them. And what's really cool about this, and um, Ted was very specific about how to use this, and I'll show you in a minute a demonstration the best way to apply it and so forth but what's really cool about it is not only is it a protectant it's also a lubricant so as you can see there when i did these with it it's now got a lubrication in it and it will dry up that lubrication in time but it's still a little bit slick 
Now let's take a look on how to apply it. First off, you got to shake it really well. Uh, one of the things I read about on Amazon is that for some reason it ships without the tube. Um, the one Ted sent me did have the tube in it. You could always use a tube though from, I'm assuming, a different uh, can of WD-40 or so forth. Uh, the tube is key though, because if you're gonna, you know, this stuff's not cheap and you don't want to use too much of it, nor do you need too much of it. See that? Just a little dab like that. And then the way, you know, Ted was very specific in his, in his instructions on how he uses it. You could use your finger. Uh, and you know, I've done that too, but he likes to, cause the problem is with this, if you use your finger and you leave a fingerprint, it could dry in there. Uh, you want to make sure that the, the surface is really clean. So if it's new, like this is relatively new, that's your best bet. Because once this seals that protective coating on there, as you can see as it's going on, it's going to put a film on it. And it's great. You see, you get it in here. It's going to leave, once it dries, it'll have a nice protective layer that's also slick, but not too slick. I, I don't know how to kind of describe it. It, like you'll I'll show you one that I've done you know what the finish looks like but I work it all in these type of things and you just put it on almost like an automobile wax right you would just put a really nice light coat on all the places that you want to be protected not too not you know just nice and thin set it aside let it dry overnight and it will dry let's see I did these here and you can see it does, you know, leaves a nice finish, but not super slick. I will say that. And I'll show you some other things I used it on that I think came out great. I don't know if you could see it here, but on the handle, starting to rust. You can see my fingerprint where I try to clean it and with a little bit of WD-40. And it's rusty, so that's going to have to come off, go on the wire wheel, and go back on. And when it goes back on, it will have... Um, the maxi film protectant on it. What I did is I actually waxed this and that's one of the things I used to use is a lot of wax. Now here is where I actually cleaned it and put the maxi film on and it's durable. It's not super slick though. And it's, this stuff's apparently, you know, Ted was saying once it's on there, you almost got to use a solvent to get it off. And so surfaces like this, I was thinking like my table saw surface, you know, the cast iron, a lot of times it gets scuffed up and roughed up. And if you use uh, this product on it, it's great because it'll dry with a nice film. Uh, you can even use it in things like your chucks and things like that, because unlike WD-40, if it does get in there and dry, hey, that's fine. It's slick. It's not going to dry up on you and cause it to gum up and, and seize. I picked up this cheap anvil from Harbor Freight because I got tired of banging stuff on my toolbox, but this is a perfect example of something that's gonna rust. This will rust. You can already see where it's breaking through whatever little clear coat they put on it. So I put a nice coat of maxi film, uh, and that's it. It dried after a day or two, and that's the thing. It, it, the thinner it is, it does, that's the only drawback to this. It's once you put it on, you got to leave it for probably, you know, 12 hours overnight. Obviously, humidity and temperature go into play with it. If you remember my axe restoration video, that's what I coated on this. I just put a little bit on it and then I hit it with a Q-tip. Nice and smooth, smoothed it out, let it dry overnight. And then after it was all dry, I just kind of wiped it, you know, just kind of cleaned it off and... I think, that, you know, that's this perfect for something like this that you're going to be out in the elements with. Uh, normally in the past, I may have waxed it up, but now I got this new product that's super durable. Think about taps, right? How many times have you seen rusty taps? It's because the steel is really super hard. You're using some tap magic on it. That gums it up, gums it, you know, it gets all grimy. Um, you know, it's always good to clean them with some WD-40 or so forth, but... That's a perfect item to use this on. And the great thing is when you're done with it, it not only cleans it and protects it, it actually has a lubricant on it uh, for the next time you use it. I just recently bought these drill bits and they were a hundred, you know, just under a hundred dollars for these Viking drill bits. And I used them on a project not too long ago to drill some steel. And after I was all done with the tap magic, I sprayed it with the maxi film, got in there, uh, with a Q-tip and just let it dry. Now it's already protected for the next time. It's kind of cool because it's got this slick 
uh, lubricant on it and it won't rust up. And I plan on doing that with my taps, my drill bits. I'm not gonna do them all at once, but after each use, I will wipe them down with that. So they'll be protected. And here's a few applications that this product's highly recommended for, right? If you look here at that chainsaw, you could put it on the blade, you could put it on the chain, makes sense. I always uh, hit my hedge trimmer, the blades with WD-40 when I'm done with it and before I put it away. I actually run it too, uh, so the WD-40 gets in all the nooks and crannies. It gets all the gum out of it. And then a trailer hitch, right? If you think about all the components on there, it's exposed to the elements, the pins, and so forth. Um, a lot of times trailer hitches, right? You're gonna have them on a boat or um, something that's not only outside, but sometimes actually submerged in water. And then all the components of a fence, the latches, the hinges, would make a great product for that as well. So like I said, this was new to me. Uh, if you know about this product, have used this product, please share in the comment uh, below. You know, I, it's not going to replace my 50-50. You know, it's a, there's always a place for that. It's not going to replace my tap magic. But it is, if you only had one thing, it actually would be the most universal thing to have around in your shop. Sometimes you just need to shoot something real quick. Boom, for the tip of a drill bit. You don't have to worry about it. You have it. You need a quick lubricant. Boom. It's there. You need to bust something free. It's there. You're not looking for uh, the 50-50 here, the WD-40 there. I mean, I really love 3-in-1 oil as a lubricant, but hey, sometimes it's not handy if you have this there. Just a quick shot of this. So very good for uh, being a universal product, but I think for me, I'm going to really use it a lot for um, rust prevention, and you only need a little dab. So uh, I think it could last a long time, even though it seems to be a little bit pricey, but yeah, hey, it's tools are expensive. And if you could prevent them from rusting, you're ahead of the game. You're actually saving money. I don't know. I thought it was cool. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And Ted, uh, thanks again. And here's a picture of Ted's vice that he recently restored. I'll leave you with that. See you at the next one. <laughs>